Like all good adventure stories, this one starts in South Auckland. We flew in last night from Wellington, slept for about 6 hours at an Airbnb, and then headed for the credit exchange to convert our money to Tala. The New Zealand dollar is worth about 2.3 Samoan Tala, so it makes you feel pretty damn rich when they give you your money back. Now back in the 50s when my grandfather immigrated to New Zealand, he took what was called a banana boat. It was called this because, you guessed it, it was mainly used to transport bananas, especially after the Second World War. By the 50s though, each boat could take around 80 domestic passengers as well as bananas, and the trip took about 13 days. In today's day and age though, there are no such boats, and I don't have that much leave of work, so we're taking the next best thing, a Jetstar plane. And if I'm honest, it really is only just the next best thing. We're arriving in Apia or Bulu Samoa, as that's the only airport in Samoa. But our first night will actually be on Savai, which means getting off the plane and getting straight onto the ferry. It's about three and a half hours from Upolo to Samoa's biggest island, but if you're lucky, you'll get the passenger ferry, where you can watch the same episode of Lilo and Stitch seven times. Once there, our accommodation is just a taxi ride away. A tip for taxis in Samoa though, they don't have meters. So if you're catching one, agree on the price before you ride. On average, if you're going anywhere in the city centre, you can say about $5, that's the standard local price. Any further than that and you may need to haggle, but not by much. Samoa isn't as dependent on tourism as other island nations, so you'll find a lot less need to haggle here. And if you notice something does cost more for you than it would a local, it honestly won't be by much. So for me, I don't mind paying it. As always, our accommodation is a little strange, but sometimes, strange can be amazing. The chalet we're staying at is not just on the beach, it's literally suspended over the waves. For a pretty reasonable price, you can get your own lockable chalet. With internet, power and its own private balcony that you can use to dive straight into the lagoon from. To get to each chalet from the main shared space is a short walk through the beautiful palm and banyan trees. Now I totally get that this won't be for some people, but travelling in luxury has never really been my thing. Let's not forget the pod in Queenstown, the house truck in Kaikoura, or the yurt in Wanaka. And to be honest, my flats haven't been that flash either. But that doesn't count. Now the plan from here was to hire a car and drive around, but we figured that hiring a tour guide for a day would actually be cheaper and we'd get to learn more. So we hit up Sam Savai Tours on Facebook, and for around $80 each, he agreed to show us around the whole island. Our first port of call was the Church of Sapapali'i, 
According to Sam, this is where John Williams, the first missionary to bring Christianity to Samoa, landed in 1830. As a result, this village only has one church, his one, which is significant because most villages in Samoa have at least two or three. Unfortunately for John Williams, he never got to see it, as he decided to continue his journey around the Pacific and eventually was killed and eaten by cannibals. Pretty cool church though. Our next stop is the Savai Lava Fields. Between 1905 and 1911, lava flowed frequently from the volcano here, destroying villages and some of the reef. Since then, people have slowly moved back to reclaim the land, but the dried lava rock is still not able to host much plant life. So for the time being, it is largely just a desert. For the people here though, the spiritual significance is not lost. Further along the coast, Sam shows us a place where the plants and trees have started to thrive and beyond them, the LMS Church. Significant not only because it still stands, but the nature in which it was claimed by the lava. In 1905 to 1911, this was a year where the things happened. And then all the way from the, from the top of the mountain, all the way down here. So you will see in front there, why the volcano they didn't come around. Why they come around there, all the way back and they flew. They should come through in, eh? They should mm. come right on uh, this side. And the reason why I said it's all the way at the back, push the sea all down here, and come through from the main entry where the people come in the church. You see, the church was built facing away from the volcano. But when the lava made it to this village, it circled around the sides of the church and entered backwards through the front door, avoiding the windows and the back entrance. Ironically, today, it's actually the dried lava that holds the church walls together. For a dose of cuteness, Sam then took us to the Savai Turtle Sanctuary. For just $7, you can swim in the rehabilitation pools with these beautiful creatures. Fun fact, turtles love rock melon. Who to thunk? For an added bonus, when you're done in the water, you can dry off on the sand with some cute land animals. Towards the end of the day, we began to round off the tour with a quick visit to the spooky Pia Pia Cave. The Pia Pia Cave is technically a pyroduct, or lava tube, an underground tunnel formed by the flowing of magma that eventually empties, leaving its hollowed out structure.
<laughs> now, the tunnel is home to nocturnal birds and very large insects. Luckily for us though, we couldn't see them. That is amazing. <laughs> Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen bats before. <laughs> so no, not many bats on uh, Savai. <laughs> For a late lunch and our final stop, we went to the Barefoot Bar and Restaurant. This place is beautiful, and as an extra bonus, very cheap. Cheap alcohol and five star meals on a white sand beach, you can't get any better than this. And obviously, we went for another swim. All tuck it out from a day of swimming, history lessons, and not wearing the correct shoes, Sam dropped us back at the lagoon. I definitely do not regret choosing to hire Sam over renting a car and trying to do it all myself. The added bonus of having Sam meant there was always someone there to look after our bags while we went out exploring. So I highly recommend. After a fruit bowl for dinner, we headed across the palm tree bridge to our chalet for the night. And a word of warning, if you're not a deep sleeper, this might not be for you. Because as we found out on our return, the waves can actually be pretty loud. Luckily, we were both exhausted. Next time on Adventure Samoa, we're heading into the jungle, exploring cave pools, and I am going to try find myself a wild sea turtle. So stick around to see how that goes. For now though, Nine Night Samoa, and thanks for watching. Yeah.